All right, so this was a total fail. It's not bulky enough, so I could get a larger eccentric weight motor and it might very well work. But I have another solution that I sort of tested manually with some spring steel and uh, it seemed to work better. So we're skipping this one and we're moving on to using this gear motor here. Rather than trying to explain exactly how this is gonna work, I figured I'd just show you. So I've gotta take this plate off this rear plate and we gotta modify it and hopefully it'll become apparent. How many times does this come apart? This is time number 7,522. Sounds right. All right, so popping this guy out of here. This is the bottom rear. We're gonna be putting a slot down the middle and we gotta put two mounting holes for this bracket, which will sit somewhere over here. And uh, should be good to go, ha ha. All right, so here we are. We got the back plate off. We're gonna drill the motor mounts first. Uh, we're gonna drill and countersink these two holes for some low profile uh, hex head screws and uh, their motor mounts, like I said. Then we're gonna drill through drill two more for the spring steel that will hold a piece that is going to basically disturb the stack. And that's a way to try it. It's gonna bump the stack. Uh, vibration wasn't significant enough, so now we're gonna use uh, a geared down motor with a lot of torque to just bump the stack. It, you'll see there's gonna be an eccentric cam. It's probably harder to explain than it is just to show you. The countersinking is going to be for one of these low profile Allen screws. These are really handy to have. And so I need 105,000 steps. So I'm going to set my zero gently. Okay, just double checking. Next two holes are where the slot's going to go that's going to hold the spring steel. Now we need to, next up, we're going to mill the relief. The reason I'm cutting this relief here, 110 thousandths, is that the spring steel and the low profile screw heads need to fit below the surface, otherwise the needles could catch on them when they're sliding down. <clears throat> Now we're just going to bite out pieces here. I'm afraid I'm going to be weakening this kind of uh, a lot and it may fold in on itself, which is unfortunate. This may have needed further support. Yeah, you can hear it deflect. Not good. If I had known everything that was gonna be put on this back piece, which originally was just supposed to be a funnel, I would have made a thicker material. I didn't realize I was gonna mount so much to it. All right, clean up the sides. And we should be good. All right, so there's the finished part. Hopefully this didn't squeeze in. I did release some of the tension on the vise and uh, I don't, you can't see back here. I've got the handle and it's uh, lowest uh, 
torque setting essentially so you, you can't tighten things too much uh, because otherwise it would pinch this closed. It feels solid enough. Hopefully it'll do the job I'm concerned. So this is the inside so the needles roll down this way. Everything that's going to bump them out is going to be recessed in here. Got to drill four holes in the spring steel that will hold the flexible piece and uh, mount on the back of the chute. And this is where electric indicators really shine. If you try to do, you know, a spinning indicator to f edge finder to try and find uh, the edge of this guy, it would be a little bit challenging. You'd have to probably use an indicator with a very fine point. But the electronic indicator, I can get it just barely above this aluminum here and then move it over and, uh, and get, the, get the zero here. There you go, see? It can just barely touch, which is really fantastic because it would be hard to find this otherwise. I've got this mounted on a piece of aluminum and uh, I super glued it to the aluminum so we can drill the four holes because even the big sheet wasn't thick enough to really support itself during the drilling operation. So we need a backstop. Uh, super glue is not really great on the edge here. I didn't put a whole lot. It's just enough to keep it in place. My real concern, however, is that this is hardened steel and this is just a high speed steel tool bit. It is going to be really rough on the bit trying to drill through this. Now let's see how it goes. Ah, well, it drilled through it, but uh, popped the super glue off. That's unfortunate. Fortunately, this isn't a super high precision uh, drilling operation as far as location of the holes. Uh, there is some slop. So what I did was I drilled deeper in the aluminum pushed the drill bit down to find the center and then lined up the edge again to a very rough approximation. And uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw a clamp here right on the end. That'll help support it. And then we'll just go and drill the other ones. Hopefully we'll be fine. I've got uh, super, more super glue and uh, Hopefully the combination will be successful. Yep, drill bit's dull. It only took four holes to wipe the drill bit out, uh, at least its sharpness. All right, debird this over the Scotch-Brite wheel. Took some of that beautiful bluing off, but uh, I think we'll be good to go here. The holes look pretty reasonable. I had to use the Scotch-Brite to deburr this. It was very hard and uh, just took the corner of the wheel and it did a nice job. I don't know if there's focusing enough for you to see, but that drill bit is chowdered. Just four holes in spring steel, which is probably RC 50s, I'm guessing, maybe 60s. Uh, yeah, didn't like it. Got a piece of 304 stainless here and I'm going to be cutting off a relief or cutting down a relief, 115 thousandths. I had it 110, but I want to give myself a little more coverage, uh, a little more uh, clearance so that uh, there's no chance that the needles would bump against this because that would be problematic in and of itself. So we're just going to take it in an inch and we're going to take it down the 115 thousandths. And we're going to drill two holes and then we're going to flip it over and I need to relieve the other side because that quarter inch plate, it has so little clearance uh, between it and the roller that uh, as it pivots up, the, since it's pivoting from the front, the back of it is going to drop below. It's a longer radius from that to the pivot point. And so it would actually intersect. So I need to remove a bunch of material from that side. We'll do that next. <laughs> Just taking a little bite. The stainless is pretty tough stuff. I'm gonna do a finishing pass at the end. And that's it for this bit. Drill two holes for mounting the spring steel. So the spring steel is going to go flat on here and then the screw heads, the low profile screw heads also have to fit below this uh, relief or fit in this relief, I guess. All right, last 
but not least, we need to remove a piece of the end of this guy uh, that'll only need to push a needle, but I need to relieve it enough so that the back part of it, as it rotates, since its pivot point is on the front, uh, the rear follows a longer arc, which means it, it will run into the uh, rotary shaft. It is a very tight fit, so I've got a 45 block in here, and I'm even going to back relief this section. All righty. I think that'll do. All right, so let's see what we are, where we are so far. First up, I mounted the bracket here, mounted the bracket to the motor. This was a purchase bracket for the motor. They sell it, saved me some time, so I didn't have to make it. <clears throat> this guy should fit in here. Oh, look at that. It is a little too big. Well, there you go. There's my first foop. I guess I'm going to have to take this over and remove just a little bit of material. Be right back. Okay, just a tiny bit of adjustment. And we have a good fit. That looks like it's below the surface, which is very important. We're just rough fitting right now just to see where we're at. I'm hoping this is uh, stiff enough spring steel to do what I need it to do because I'm counting on that. This is uh, 14 thousandths thick, I think. All right, <clears throat> now this guy mounts right in here and oh, look at that. It's a little, it's a little thick. I think what happened was this got pinched together. Oh yeah. So we're gonna have to clean that up before this is gonna work. So this is supposed to be flush here and basically we're gonna be doing one of these kind of things. It's gonna pop out and just move the needles at the bottom towards the inside. That's all it's gonna do. But I got to make sure it doesn't stick, so we got to clean up the sides here. All righty. We just sanded up the sides a little bit on the belt sander that I made. Did a wonderful job. And this looks like it's going to fit very nicely. Uh, these thread in, actually, because that's threaded holes. I could have made those t through holes as well. Here's the progress so far. So we got spring steel down here. These are below the surface, so the needles won't touch them. Uh, this I beveled just a little bit in case it stuck out at all uh, so that the needles wouldn't uh, stop on that either because I don't want any ledges. Uh, so you can see that this guy's flexible with the spring steel here. I've got it curved just slightly back. On this side, we have the uh, gear motor here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put an eccentric cam right here. And the eccentric cam is just going to push this out every revolution. And hopefully, yeah, this thing sits back so perfectly. Gravity's on its side. Basically, we're gonna do this every revolution. So you can see that this is so close to the bottom that if it were thick, um, it would be a problem. I don't know if you can see it on this guy, but you look at the clearance here and it is tiny. This thing barely has room to spin by it. Uh, and that was so there's no chance of a needle getting stuck. Probably didn't need to be that tight, but I was. So anyways, this guy is gonna get mounted back in here. We need to get the eccentric cam in here so that this is all working. And then we'll see if that's enough to dislodge the needles. In my test, I had a piece of spring steel that I was just sticking down here. And I just bounce it like this in between uh, delivery of the needle. And it freed it every time. So hopefully that'll work. All right, so here we are. Uh, last part of this uh, solution that I'm hoping is going to work. Uh, i got to make the eccentric cam right here. And... Uh, We've got some stock over here, got some brass I'm going to use. And uh, to measure this guy here, I pop this guy in here to keep the front of this piece coplanar with the front of this chute. And then I stuck an adjustable parallel right here and I measured this distance. And then I added 50 thousandths for one side and 50 thousandths for the other side. I'm going to remove all sides but one side out of here. So uh, we need to uh, make the uh, bushing on the, out of the brass. And then I need to make uh, something to be able to turn it in my rotary table. Uh, there's always lots of work, right? <laughs> and hopefully this works and it's not a fail. I'm really counting. All right, so of course, I want to face this guy first. So we need to go in 
some amount that uh, the center is eight millimeters, which is 0 0.315. So I don't know, we could shoot for like three quarters of an inch, the actual size again, not terribly important. I wonder if I could just take this whole bite at one time. That'd be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? I'm gonna try. So that's removing a quarter inch of material, no problem. I guess that looks about right. I just need to drill and ream the center of this for eight millimeters. I fortunately, I have an eight millimeter reamer. I don't have many metric reamers, but I happen to have that one. They always say parting is such sweet sorrow, but to be honest, I find it kind of exciting. I swear I love brass. It's one of the reasons I chose it for this particular project. It's just so much fun to work with. All right, so our eccentric cam's ready to go over and have everything but a 50,000th bump machined off of here. I gotta clean off this burr here, of course. And, uh, and then I need to drill and tap for a set screw in there. And we should be good to go. Well, this is mandrel number, I don't know, 10 for that thing, <laughs> for the rotary table. So this side is gonna be drill and tapped 3 8 24 to meet up with this guy. This is a Morse taper. This is a Morse taper three, I think, or two. I can't remember if three, three. That fits down the center of the rotary table. And uh, you can thread a mandrel on top. It's been ground flat, as you can see. And so we need to thread in this far for this guy. And on the other side, we need to have a, uh, a little nub that's sticking out eight millimeters uh, that will be drilled and tapped down the center to hold a flange that will hold the part down. And that's it, that's pretty much it. There's not a lot to this part thing here. We need to get the eight millimeter part pretty close to accurate. And let's see how we did. If I was going to use this for more than one part, we'd probably make this out of steel, but uh, since we're not, I don't have to worry about it. And beautiful. Turning the outside of this guy made it so that when I flipped it over, I could find zero again. We're off by less than a thousand, so that's very good. Nicely repeating six dot chuck, huh? Because I didn't uh, preset it for this diameter. It was set for a much smaller diameter and actually worked out fine. We're going to take off a lot of material. we got to get down to just the center being 0.315. So you can imagine it's going to be, it's going to be a bloodbath out here. Pretty nice tool for scooping off lots of material quickly. I really like it. Uh, the tip's a bit fragile, but these are Asian import uh, uh, inserts on it. So I bet you if you had Kenamel or Sandvik, uh, they do much better, or Iskar, one of the big guys. This is a DKJNR, and then 2525 is 25 millimeter uh, M16. Um, I saw A-Bomb use one of these once upon a time. I thought, oh man, I need to find one of these. So I found this one used and uh, found some uh, Asian inserts and it's great. Again, the insert tips a little fragile if it's a hard material like steel, but an aluminum <laughs> scoops it like butter. And 
drill and tap for 832. Start with a center drill. I think we're going to hand tap this one. I don't uh, want to risk power tapping it, especially since I uh, drilled for 70% threads. All right, so we're going to start with the easy operation. We're going to drill and tap for uh, 832. I went big because I want it to be strong. Sorry, I'm left-handed. I know that makes it hard for you to see sometimes. I've shown this before, but to get this thing close to zeros, which I will set on my DRO, I have a one inch, I have one of these uh, Morse tapers and I have a one inch mandrel inside here. And it just helps me get it lined up pretty close. And we'll dial it in, that one right there. And that just lets me get it close and we'll dial it in after. And of course, now I get the Morse paper stuck. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so you saw me dial that in. And just by dropping the Morse taper down the center of this, and you see how close it got it, like half a thousandth, which is crazy. All right, so things fit better having the end mill on the other side. So I'm going to do that. And here's the really silly part. You're going to laugh. I had no reason to find the center of this. I can bring the end mill in from literally any angle and just rotate through just enough that I've got a bump that I think is uh, adequate, which is not going to be very much, to be honest. We're going to go in uh, 50 thousandths. Oh, oh, except that it turned in the, it unthreaded. Well, that was a foop and a half, wasn't it? Destroyed my end mill too. That was an expensive end mill. Oh, you gotta, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, it unscrewed itself. I didn't think about that aspect. Well, actually I thought it was gonna be fine because I tightened this enough. I didn't think about this threaded into the bottom. Got a new end mill, tightened things considerably. Although I'm not sure it's still gonna, still not gonna work. Put a little friction on this guy here. So I just unthreaded the fender washer and screw, which held it down nicely. Here's my part. It can get damaged, fortunately. There's the eccentric uh, portion of it. Hopefully that'll be smooth enough. It feels like it. I'm going to deburr this edge kind of sharp and uh, we'll go head over and try it out. All right, so I'm going to pop this guy on here and you can see there's a flat in the D right here. So I'm going to get that set screw lined up with that flat. There we go. I just need to move the motor this way a little bit. I mean, it doesn't really need to be centered on this, but uh, why not, right? So now let's see how much deflection we get. Perfect. That's doing exactly what I want it to do. Hopefully it's not too far in on the bottom because it might be. So now the question is, do I really need 50 thousandths worth of agitation? Because the needles actually stick in there. That worked perfectly every single time, so that solved my problem. The only thing I think is, is I don't think the cam needs to stick out 50 thousandths. I think that might be too much. Um, it was kind of, it was kind of catching. Let's see if I can catch the cam when it's engaged there. Okay. See, I'm worried about it actually pinching the needle because that really goes in quite far. Yeah, see, it's, it's smashing up against it. That's not good. So I'm thinking take a little more off on the on just the cam part of it. We'll be right back. All right, so here we go. I reduced the uh, lobe on the cam by about 20 thousandths from 50 thousandths, so it's only protruding 30 thousandths. I think it'll still push on the needle a little bit, but I don't think it squeezes them and potentially damages them. So here, one needle ejected, 
went around once, one needle ejected, went around once. Oh, that didn't do it. There we go. I was planning on having it going around two or three times. Let's see. One, two, three. Eject the needle. 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 Perfect every time. All right, so I think we're good if I let it uh, do it too. So the last thing I need to do is to need, make sure that these needles come out roughly centered. So I need to make a shoot, uh, some sort of a sloping bit on this side to make sure that the needles end up right where they're supposed to. Other than that, I think it's working. Very exciting.